each of the niche sites that come in this particular package, they all have these custom made header images that you will notice up at the top of these websites. If you look at the actual package files here, there's a couple things that I want to point out about these. Number one, you have this site customization guide. Inside of this guide, you have instructions to use this site called PicMonkey, and you can use that to customize these header images that you're getting with package. However, it is going to be a pretty limited type of editing that that site will allow you to do for free. They do have an upgrade account that is $5 a month, but honestly, if you're going to spring for the $5 upgrade, I want to show you guys an alternative that is much, much better and honestly a lot more powerful in terms of what you're getting for your money. That is the full-fledged Adobe Photoshop. Now you've likely heard about Photoshop. It's something that pretty much everybody uses for image editing. So whether you need to do simple image editing or create your own image files from scratch in the future for your own websites, and chances are if you have run any websites before, you know that having access to graphics is really important. Now, I'm not an affiliate for this or anything, but I still wanted to point it out to you guys because it is something that's really, really useful. Adobe used to only sell their software where you would get Adobe Photoshop and only one particular version of it, and they would charge you a small fortune. So instead of paying $500 to $1,000 or even more, for Photoshop, you can now get it as part of their Creative Cloud Bundle. And they actually have a couple of different levels depending on what programs you actually need access to and some other features. However, their low-end program here, the Photography Plan, this is only $9.99 a month. So it's only twice the cost of the PicMonkey and this is going to give you both Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Now, Adobe Photoshop is the one you're really interested in there. These other plans do still include Photoshop, but they include a lot of other Adobe software that you would likely not have a need for. Personally, I use the complete plan myself, but I also do things like video editing. So I'd use Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, in addition to things like Photoshop. However, for most people just running normal websites, the photography plan can be more than enough for you. And $10 a month is really a pretty low price to pay to have access to Photoshop. And not only that, but you get the most up-to-date version. So if you would like to sign up for that plan, just go to creative.adobe.com forward slash plans. And again, this isn't something that I'm promoting as an affiliate or have any kind of connection to in any way, form, or fashion. It is simply something that I use myself and is a uh, pretty big standard across image editing for that matter. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to show you guys how to go about editing these header images. But I'm not going to do this the way that they teach you in this particular customization guide. Here they are teaching the PicMonkey strategy. But number one up here they mentioned Photoshop and simply say that this guide is for people that are not using Photoshop. Okay, so what about the people that are using Photoshop? That is what I'm here for. 
I'm going to give you guys a quick little rundown on how to use Photoshop. I can't honestly teach you all of Photoshop in one fail swoop. There's so much that it can do. If there's something particular that you are looking to do with it, chances are you can probably Google it and find fairly simple instructional videos that will teach you specific features of Photoshop. What I'm going to do though is show you how to change the text in this particular image. In any of these packages have them. I'm going into the adult Halloween costumes package but all these other packages have the same folders within them and one of them is called header files. If you simply go in there you will find two images. One of them is this header image with the text already on it and the other one is completely blank. So you could use these images as they are if you are happy with them but if you want to customize the text that is being shown then you would actually want to use this Photoshop file here. So open this file in Photoshop and I already have this open over here so you can see what this is going to look like. Now over here on the right this is your layers panel. If you expand this one called group 2 you will see that there are different layers in it and some of them are for text and others are graphics. So if you want to pick and choose different parts of the image to display or remove all you really have to do is click on this little eyeball over on the left. So if I want to remove some of the graphics that are on there you can see what happens. This particular layer 9 here is for these guys that are up in the foreground. So if I just wanted to use the background only, that's something that I can do here. Now all of the text items that are here, there are actually two different sets of each of the words and you can see them here in the image you'll notice that some of them will say adult and some will say costumes and some will say Halloween and there are two of each. Well if I hide one of the Halloweens you can see that it shows me the other text behind it. So I could use this style of text or I could use this style of text. So whatever I thought looked the best with what I was trying to achieve on my site, then I can hide the other set of the text that is already in there. Now all I need to do is click on the T over here in the left hand sidebar. This is the toolbar that gives you different options of things that you can do to your picture you're working on. So the T is for text. Since I already have text built into this image, all I really need to do is just hover this little text icon over one of them and it'll automatically select it. And then I can use my arrow keys to figure out where in here I want to go to. And I could change this to anything that I want. If I wanted to show my actual website domain name here instead of something generic like adult Halloween costumes this is how I would go about changing it or I could even do something simple like you see here changing it to Ryan's Halloween costumes. Now when you are done editing you have two options up here this will cancel any changes that you've made to the text and revert it to how it was before you clicked on it and the check mark will say yes I like what I've done and that will commit my current text editing. So I'm going to click on the check mark here and that will commit it to my image. 
So once you are done editing your text how you need it, there are two other things I want to talk to you about. And one is rearranging your text or possibly other items that are in the image. And then the other one is how do you then take this from Adobe Photoshop and turn it into an actual image that you can use on your own website. So number one, the very first toolbar icon up here is a little arrow. This is the cursor and whenever you have a layer selected over here, if you simply click anywhere in this screen and then drag your cursor in a direction, you will move the text. So if I wanted it to be showing up over here, I can make it do that. And then let's say I want to move the word Halloween. I could maybe leave it kind of there and then costumes, I could put it a little further down. So you can rearrange the actual arrangement of all of this text and even the images. Let's say you wanted to put your text on the right side and you wanted to have these creepy guys over here on the left side. Well, number one, I could undo my changes by undoing a couple of times or you can also step backward. So I can reverse what I just did here. Undoing only lets me go one step but step backwards actually lets me go multiple times into the past to undo a couple of things that I've done. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is move my text and my images. I'm going to revert these two in terms of where they are placed. So I want all of my text. I'm actually going to click on the top one and hit the shift button on my keyboard and click on the bottom one and that's going to select all of them for me at the same time and then I could simply click here and drag all of this over. Now if you can see the little numbers that are showing up above my image, one shows me how far left or right I have moved my image and the other one shows me how far up or down I have moved it. So if you want to maintain the same vertical position all you have to do is make sure that the down arrow number is on 0, 0.000 inches. So right now it is on 0 inches for the up and down moving distance and the right moving distance is on 7.458 inches. So I could leave it here and then go over to my image. So layer 9 was my guys in the costumes so I can simply click on this and I could drag them over. Now you might see how there are some examples where the image has not been completely edited out and you may actually not be able to rearrange things completely as you would like. It just kind of depends but you could take another image for example and drop it on here if you want. I just wanted to show you a few different possibilities of things that you can do in terms of rearranging and some basic image editing, whether it applies to this particular image or to other ones that you might work on. So I'm going to step back to where I had this set up originally, Ryan's Halloween Costumes. I've gone through now and edited my text and have it set up to the way that I actually want it to be showing up on my live website. So now how do I take this and turn it into that actual image that I can publish? Number one, go up to File and go to Save for Web. On this page, you get a bit of a preview in terms of what your image will look like. So you can make sure 
that your final draft is not going to end up looking washed out or grainy or something in a particular area. So the part you're really wanting to pay attention to is up here. This little drop down box lets you select the type of file that you're publishing. Now it might already be set on JPEG by default, but if you look at the header images that were actually included, you can see that these are PNG images. So we can actually save this image in that same format using this drop down box. PNG 8 is an 8 bit format, so that's going to be a lower quality, and PNG 24 will be a higher quality. But always remember, when you go for a higher quality image, you are getting a higher file size. So you sometimes have to find a happy median with especially larger, you know, really high def type of images. So I'm going to select PNG 24 here. This is going to be a higher quality PNG image, and I can actually leave everything else exactly how it is. So now I just want to click on the Save button. So after clicking on the Save button now, I can simply choose where I want to save this to. So I could go back into this exact same folder that I had unzipped on my computer for this entire package and I can save this as my own custom file. So now the only thing that you need to do is to actually put this particular file on your website. Now this part is actually pretty easy to do. All you're really going to be doing is replacing files that already exist on your website. Now this can be done in one of two ways. Jump back over to my website here. You can do it through your control panel. This goes back to the installation stuff that I was showing you guys in the installation video. Using the file manager to upload files, or you can also use FTP to upload files. Now, I uploaded the original installation files for this package using the file manager in the control panel last time. So if you're using that method and you're not quite sure how to go about uploading these files, go and take a look at that. There are actually some instructions for that in the customization guide PDF that was included in the package as well. So I thought that I would show you the FTP option this time. So all you need to do is simply connect to your website to begin with. When you are in the public directory of your site, you want to look at the folders that you have and you're looking for the WP content folder. Then you're going to go into the themes folder. Then you're going to go into the lifestyle folder. And finally, you're going to go into the images folder. Now the image that you are ultimately interested in is header.png. We want to replace header.png with a file that we have created. So to do this, we are first going to go and locate the header image that we have created. So that would be this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to my site. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my existing header file and I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call it header old. 
That way that file still exists. So if I ever want to revert my changes, all I have to do is just rename this header old file to header.png once again, and it will begin to function. So now I can rename my new image to header.png. So I'm going to right click it and go to rename and set this to header.png. Now another option, I could have simply had the file on my computer. This is over here on the left is my computer and over on the right is the website. I could have simply had this file over here named header PNG and I could have tried to upload it and just told it to overwrite the existing file but that would have wiped out the existing header file that was on my site in case I needed to revert these changes. So the final thing that I want to do is repeat this same exact process but now do it with the header blank file. So now I'm going to take header blank and I'm going to rename it as well. And I'm going to add dash old onto the end of it so I can retain that file. And then I'm going to upload this file again. I'll go ahead and call it header old. Sorry, not header old. header underscore blank and then I'm going to upload this to my site. So once I have my image files uploaded then I can go back to my live website over here and refresh it and this should now change my header image file. Now as you can see on my site it actually did not. However this could easily be a caching issue. I'm going to show you how to check that out just to double check and be sure that you have actually done this correctly. So to do this, click on the image. Do a right mouse click. And you should be able to see an option. I'm using Google Chrome here, or sorry, Firefox. You should see an option that says view background image or copy image URL, anything of that nature where you can actually get the true destination of the image that you're seeing up top here. So I'm going to click view background image. And as you can see, once it actually pulls this up showing me the image file by itself, you can see that it is showing correctly. So what I may need to do is go back here to my main site and as you can see now it is correctly showing up. So that's the caching sometimes taking place. It will be looking at your site and the images that get loaded up it will simply not reload them every single time. So sometimes you might need to clear that out. But that wouldn't actually happen for anyone else visiting your site. It's just for you because you had seen your site with that image at the top before. So that's actually something really useful to know. And it can cause you a lot of headache and frustration if you feel like you've done it correctly. And then you go to your site and it's not actually showing the changes that you believe you had made. So don't start freaking out at first. Just go and double check that the image is actually loaded that way. And another thing you can do is to try loading it in a different browser. That will have the same effect for you as well.